Hello, and welcome to the University of Ottawa Heart Institute's Cardiac Surgery Prehabilitation Video Series. My name is Kathy Caldwell, and I'm a nurse in cardiac rehab here at the Heart Institute. Um, as you follow this video series, you, you can use the Waiting for Cardiac Surgery and the Cardiac Prehabilitation Guides for a reference. Both these guides are available in English and French and can be accessed through the Surgical Triage Office or on the Heart Institute website. And these are the books I'm referring to. Waiting for cardiac or heart surgery can be an emotional and stressful time, not only for the patient, but also for the family, partner, or friend supporting them through this journey. It is normal for not only the patient, but for the caregiver to worry and feel stressed. Therefore, this prehabilitation video series, or prehab as we affectionately call it for short video series, was developed by the multidisciplinary team of nursing, physiotherapy, social work, and dietetics to provide information and education to help you better prepare for your upcoming cardiac surgery. Next slide. The benefits of prehab include improved physical and psychological readiness for surgery, reduced complications after surgery, reduced length of stay in hospital after surgery, and improved transition from the hospital to the community. Next slide. We have divided this presentation into four parts so that you are able to view the information in shorter segments. It is important that you view all four videos as they are equally important in preparing you for your upcoming surgery. The slide you're viewing right now works as a table of contents so you can break down into different sections. We hope you find the videos informative and helpful. It is a privilege for us to be involved in your care. Please remember that we at the Heart Institute are here uh, for you no matter what. Uh, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. Our first speaker today is Regan Kiefer, and Regan is the Senior Physiotherapist in Cardiac Rehab. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, hello, my name is Regan Kiefer, and I'm a physiotherapist here at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about what you can do to help prepare yourself for heart surgery and what you can expect from physiotherapy through this waiting time, as well as during your recovery. So just to give you an idea of what we will discuss, I'll start by telling you about what you can do now while waiting for surgery. We call this the pre-operative phase, or pre-op, before your surgery. Then I'll talk about the post-op phase, or after your surgery, and what you can expect from your recovery, both in hospital and once you go home. I'll also point out that you can find all this information in your cardiac prehabilitation guide, as well as the Waiting for Cardiac Surgery guidebook. So let's talk about what you can do in preparation for your surgery during the pre-op phase. It may come as a surprise to you, but it is important for you to remain as active as possible in the weeks before your surgery. Within reason, of course. The better you are moving before your surgery, the quicker and easier your recovery is likely to be afterwards. The important thing is to not bring on your cardiac symptoms. These will be different for everyone, but may include chest pain or angina, shortness of breath, fatigue, lightheadedness, dizziness, or nausea. So please always listen to your body. Do what feels comfortable and easy and do not push yourself. Keep in mind, exercise does not need to be strenuous to be valuable. Walking is one of the best cardiovascular exercises you can do, whether you have heart disease or not. It's cheap, adaptable to almost everyone, and requires very little equipment. Our recommendation is for you to try a short walk every day while waiting for surgery. Keep it easy and do only what you feel is manageable without bringing on your symptoms. Think of it as maintaining what you've got, not training to improve. That part will come after your surgery. 
If you always feel symptoms when you walk, if you do not know how to recognize your symptoms, or if you've never experienced any symptoms at all, consider chair exercises. You can march your feet while sitting, or kick your legs out, or even just pump your ankles up and down. This will allow you to benefit from exercise, but in a less demanding position, so it's easier for your heart. If walking more than five minutes seems like a lot to you, you may also consider an interval walking program, alternating short periods of walking and resting. Start with an interval of walking that you can manage, let's say two minutes, and follow it with a one or two minute rest. Repeat this pattern as many times as you are comfortably able. You can decide the number of minutes that best suit your ability. Remember, your activity should not reproduce your cardiac symptoms. You should stop if you feel any of the signs listed here or any discomfort. If these feelings do not go away with a few minutes rest, seek emergency medical services immediately. That means calling 911 or getting to the closest emergency department. Don't be afraid to go to an emergency department, even during pandemic times. By waiting to get medical attention, you are risking your life. And if you're noticing a change in any of your symptoms, please contact the Heart Institute Surgical Nursing Coordinator. This number is on the first page of your Waiting for Cardiac Surgery guidebook. So some aspects of your surgery may cause you some unexpected muscle and joint soreness. This can be from positioning during surgery, or recovery time in an unfamiliar bed, and even from plain inactivity. In order to help you prepare and prevent some of this discomfort, we have created a pre-op exercise program for you to follow. This is included in your prehab guidebook on pages five through 12. In an effort to save time today, I won't review each exercise. They are simple, clearly explained, with pictures and descriptions, and are very straightforward. You should try to complete them once every day as tolerated. This shouldn't take you any more than about 10 minutes. Pay attention to how you feel after each session, as well as the next day. If any of the exercises cause you any discomfort, discontinue that exercise. The one exercise I will review is the first one on page five called breathing. It's very simple, but with enormous benefits. You'll be asked to use this technique often in hospital following your procedure, along with coughing strongly to help clear your lungs. A simple way to remember the technique is to think of smelling a bouquet of your favorite flowers and blowing out your birthday candles. This breathing exercise is also a wonderful technique to use when you're feeling anxious or nervous. It can help distract you and calm you down. So here's a demonstration of that video, or of that breathing technique. Sit straight on a chair with your feet flat on the floor, back supported, and shoulders down. Take as deep a breath as you can through your nose and then breathe out through your mouth. Maintain good posture. Repeat five times. You can try to cough after this exercise to help clear your lungs of mucus. So now that you have an idea of what you can do in preparation for your surgery, we're ready to move on to the post-op phase. For most cardiac surgeries, your surgeon will need to cut through your breastbone or your sternum in order to access your heart. This incision is called a sternotomy. In order to protect this incision as it heals, your surgeon will set some limitations on what you can do with your hands and arms. We call these sternal precautions, and they are no lifting, pushing, or pulling anything more than five to 10 pounds for six to eight weeks after your surgery. And your surgeon will let you know when you can resume normal use of your arms again. Now, 10 pounds doesn't seem like much, but it can significantly impact the way you go about your daily activities. Consider things like groceries, heavy doors, 
grandchildren, and even pets. You'll need to plan to have help during this time to keep you within those restrictions. We'll provide some demonstrations of strategies for maintaining these sternal precautions shortly to help you with some common position changes, like getting up from a chair or getting out of bed. So when will a physiotherapist get involved? If you currently have any mobility challenges, we will arrange for a brief physiotherapy assessment in the pre-admission unit or when you come into hospital before your procedure. This will help our team plan for your stay, ensuring you have all the right equipment to help you get moving. This assessment would happen within your scheduled PAU visit, so you don't need to worry about arranging it. Following your surgery, physio, physio will be in to assess your breathing and mobility on the first day after your surgery. We'll get you sitting up, taking a few steps from the bed to sit in a chair, and even walking a short distance on your first day. Don't worry, you won't be expected to manage on your own. We will be there to help you every step of the way. We do rely on all sorts of rehab equipment here in hospital to use with our patients. Don't be surprised, but many of our patients will use a walker for the first few days in hospital, just to give them a little extra stability. We provide this, we provide this equipment and trust me, you'll be happy to use it. Following the first day, our team will ensure you continue to progress towards your pre-op mobility so that we can get you home. And before you go home, you will practice the skills you need to move around safely at home, including walking, showering, and going up and down stairs. Get ready to work hard with physio. Changing positions presents a problem for many people when trying to follow sternal precautions after surgery. We call these position changes transfers. The following videos demonstrate some of the common ones and how you can do them safely. We recommend you practice these at home with your family or caregiver or whomever will be helping you once you go home so that you'll feel comfortable with the techniques by the time your surgery date comes. You can return to this video anytime on the Heart Institute website to review these demonstrations as often as you'd like. So to begin, here is a video demonstrating how to safely stand up from a chair or the edge of the bed without using your hands. To help a patient stand up independently, begin by explaining the procedure. How to stand up from the chair on your own. To begin, I'm going to ask you to hold on to your teddy. First, the patient crosses his arms on his chest. Is scoot your hips over the edge of the chair. Next, he moves to the edge of the chair by shifting his weight from side to side. Nice and wide. So let's bring them apart. Excellent. Very good. Making sure that he looks ahead leans forward until his nose is over his toes and rocks three times. One. Then he uses his leg muscles to lift his hips off the chair, straighten his knees and stand up. To summarize, explain the procedure to the patient. What we're gonna do, the first thing you'll do. The patient crosses his arms and moves to the edge of the chair. Walk more. Excellent. Very good. He leans forward, looks ahead, rocks three times, straightens his legs and stands. Some days you may feel a bit more tired than others. This next video shows how a caregiver can help you get out of a chair if you just don't feel you have the energy to stand up on your own. This scenario demonstrates how to transfer a patient from sitting to standing with the help of one person. Begin by explaining the procedure. So I'm going to ask you to hold the patient crosses his arms on his chest and moves to the edge of the chair by shifting his weight. Have the patient lean forward until his nose is over his toes and look ahead. Use your foot and knee to help block the patient from sliding. 
Support his elbow or forearm and place your other hand on his lower back. Okay. Do not hold under his armpit. Okay. Help him rock back and forth. And then, on a count of three, he uses his leg muscles to lift his hips off the chair, straighten his knees, and stand up. To summarize, explain the procedure to the patient. The patient crosses his arms and moves to the edge of the chair. Block the patient's foot and knee and support his elbow or forearm and lower back. He leans forward, looks ahead, rocks back and forth three times, straightens his legs and stands. Two and three. Getting out of bed can be a challenge for many people with sternal precautions. This technique is not the natural way most people get out of bed, so I strongly recommend you practice this one at home. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Not too bad, thank you. Good. I'm here because I want to show you... To help a patient sit up independently, Begin by explaining the procedure. I'm going to remove some blankets. Okay, yeah. Okay, now first of all, you need to hold your pillow. Cross the patient your crosses his arms on his chest, bends his knees, and places both feet on the bed. I want you to tuck your chin in. Okay. He rolls onto his side like a log and lowers his feet over the side of the bed. Now you can bring your... To sit up, he uses his abdominal muscles and pushes lightly on the bed with his elbow, not his hands and pulls with his legs against the side of the bed. To summarize, explain the procedure to the patient. He crosses his arms and bends his knees. He rolls onto his side and brings his feet over the edge of the bed using his elbow, not his hands. He pushes himself up and pulls with his legs. And here again in this video, um, we demonstrate how a family member or caregiver might help you get out of bed when you're feeling just a bit weaker. This scenario demonstrates how to transfer a patient to a sitting position with the help of one person. Begin by explaining the procedure. Have the patient cross his arms on his chest and help him bend his knees and place his feet on the bed. Roll the patient towards you and onto his side. Then help him lower his feet over the edge of the bed. To sit up, have the patient use his abdominal muscles and push lightly on the bed with his elbow, not his hand, and pull with his legs. Assist by putting one hand under his shoulder and pushing down on the patient's hip with the other hand. Take a wide stance and shift your weight to move the patient. And three. Excellent. Excellent. You doing okay? To summarize, to explain the procedure to the patient. Cross arms, bend knees, and roll the patient onto his side. Lower feet over the edge of the bed. Support the patient's shoulder and push down on his hip while he uses his elbow, not his hand, to push himself up. Take a wide stance and shift your body weight. Lower the bed so the patient's feet touch the floor. Don't forget, you can return to this video anytime on the Heart Institute website to review these demonstrations. And finally, here's how to get back into bed from a sitting position. To help a patient transfer from sitting to lying independently, begin by explaining the procedure. Ask the patient to cross his arms on his chest. Remind the patient to keep breathing normally. The patient then tilts to the side to take some of his weight on his elbow. Next, he lifts one leg onto the bed, then the other, and rolls onto his back. 
adjust the bed to make the patient comfortable. Ask the patient to remove the pillow off his chest once the transfer is done. To summarize, explain the procedure to the patient. He crosses his arms, then tilts sideways onto his elbow. He lifts his legs one at a time onto the bed, then rolls onto his back. So prior to your discharge from the hospital, a physiotherapist will provide you with a daily exercise and walking program for you to do at home. This will include a simple morning exercise routine, as well as a gradually increasing walking program designed specifically for you at discharge. You'll also watch the physiotherapy discharge class to help explain all the exercise, exercises and to answer any questions you may have. It will be very important for you to follow this prescription in order for you to build your endurance and get back to your previous level of function. Keep in mind, we all have good days and bad days. Your recovery will go up and down, but overall, you should see improvement as the weeks go on. So when it's time for you to leave the hospital, our multidisciplinary team will make sure that you have everything you need for a safe discharge home. If the team thinks you will need any specialized equipment at home, they will provide you with all the information you and your caregiver will need to make sure it's in place. Very few patients require private physiotherapy services outside the hospital after surgery. The majority of patients recover well by following the post-op program provided by the physiotherapist at the hospital until they begin a cardiac rehabilitation program. But for those who may need physio or any other services in the community, we can make those referral and set things up. And finally, please consider joining a cardiac rehabilitation program near you. A multidisciplinary team can help you achieve optimal heart health by addressing all your cardiac risk factors. Available programs include physiotherapy, nursing, nutrition, social work, psychology, vocational counseling, diabetes management, and smoking cessation. With exercise counseling and education, will help you get back on your feet and help you achieve and maintain a heart healthy lifestyle. There are programs all over the region and province that we can refer you to, including on-site, telephone, and virtual programs. If you're eligible to participate, we will reach out to you, but feel free to give us a call for more information. Thank you for watching this video series. As you can see, we have provided important education and information for both patients and family to help get ready for cardiac surgery. We hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or concerns that have not been answered, you can call your surgeon's office, call the cardiac surgery triage office at 613-696-7062, or off hours, call the Surgical Nursing Coordinator at 613-696-7000, extension zero. Um, very soon, we will be contacting you to ask specific questions to help us identify if you need additional help before your surgery. We look forward to seeing you soon. And again, to find all the tools and resources presented in this video series, please visit our website at ottawaheart.ca. Thank you for your time.